after Donald Trump has basically mocked everybody with personal attacks. So if there's anyone who's ever deserved to be attacked that way, it's been Donald Trump for the way he's treated people for the last campaign. Look at those hands. Are they small hands? <laughs> And he referred to my hands. If they're small, something else must be small. I guarantee you there's no problem. I guarantee you. I don't think the people of America are interested in a bunch of bickering school children. It's easy to say, make things better, make things great. You can even print it and put it on a baseball cap. I have a policy question for you, yes. sir. Let's see if he answers it. You're... I will. Don't worry about it, Mark. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it, little Marco, I will. Is this the debate you want playing out in the general election? Breathe. Lion breathe, Ted. Breathe. You Lion can do it. You can breathe. I, I know it's hard. I know it's hard, but just... When they're done with the yoga, can I answer a question? You, you cannot. <laughs> Let's stop fighting. <laughs> While the candidates may have gotten mixed reviews, the Fox News moderators, Megyn Kelly, Brett Baer, and Chris Wallace got raves. You say that Medicare could save $300 billion a year negotiating lower drug prices. But Medicare total only spends $78 billion a year on drugs. Sir, that's the facts. You're talking about saving more money on Medicare. I'm saying saving drugs. through negotiation throughout the economy, you'll save $300 billion a year. Deficit. And that's a huge... Of course it is. We're going to buy things for less money. Of course We're, it is. That the works only out. money that we buy, the only drugs that we pay for is through I'm Medicare. not only talking about drugs, I'm talking about other things. Joining me now from Washington, Fox News Sunday host and debate moderator, Chris Wallace. Now, Chris, first of all, great job last night. Congratulations. You guys put up staggering numbers. It was pretty rowdy. got raucous in the times. You must have felt like you were, I don't know, taming lions out there. Well, yeah, or herding cats, one or the other. Uh, I, I got to tell you, it was interesting because, you know, we'd seen the previous debate on CNN and seen how it had degenerated into a bunch of name calling. So Brett and Megan and I were all determined uh, to, to try to focus on policy. And there was one example talking about Donald Trump's numbers and trying to fact check him in real time with graphics about whether his numbers added up or not in terms of what he could say from waste, fraud and abuse. But having said that, you know, I said going into the debate, if they want to act like a bunch of damn fools, we can't stop them. And there were certainly times, and you had a bunch of those clips, where they acted like damn fools. Was, it, was the mood different in the arena this time versus last time? Yeah, I, I've got to say, something weird is happening in these debates. And afterwards, the uh, Republican officials, including Reince Priebus, very upset about it. They say ever since the South Carolina debate, that there's been a lot of uh, hecklers, a lot of screaming. They apparently had to eject several dozen people. They were drunk, they were shouting. Uh, and, and, you know, these tickets are divided amongst the candidates, so it seems, and I don't know who it was, that some of the candidates are giving tickets to people to just try to shout out when one of the other candidates is speaking. It, it, you know, look, you want candidate. You want audience participation, audience enthusiasm, but it's getting out of control. And I will tell you, the Republican Party officials are concerned about it because they think it, it only adds to this sense that it's uh, uh, gladiators fighting in the Coliseum. So um, do they not want that, Chris? I mean, the ratings have been phenomenal across the board. You guys crushed it last night as well. But you do. You have a sense of excitement there. There's, there's, the audience is getting involved. The candidates are going back and forth. You're, you're trying to, you know, like you said, herd the cats. But... It, it is very watchable, and we're getting a lot out of that. Well, yeah, but, but so is uh, Ultimate Fighting Championship, you know, mixed martial wrestling. And, and uh, y y y yes, do you get a big audience? But is it presidential, and is it more likely that one of these guys at the general public is going to sit there and uh, elect somebody? It's good TV, but is it necessarily good for the Republican Party? That's really the... Uh, the kind of conflict that's going on here. Okay, so tell us uh, about who you thought did very well last night and who, who you thought didn't. Well, a couple of things, and, and some of this is what I, I saw on screen, and there were also some things that I picked up that people wouldn't have seen on camera. Uh, one of the things off camera, Marco Rubio was sick as a dog. You could hear it in his voice, but at the end of the debate, he came up, and, you know, we all wanted to shake hands with him. And he said, I'm not going to do that. I got the flu. And he kind of gave us a, an elbow bump instead. And I, I think his performance was really hurt because he was, he was under the weather. Uh, I thought Trump did very well in, in the first hour. And, and you could see a very conscious effort on his part 
to try to pivot, to be less bombastic, to be more presidential, as he says his wife Melania is, is uh, suggesting that he be. Uh, and, and, you know, he, he made the point, I'm going to negotiate with Congress. I'm going to be flexible on some positions, including immigration. We've got to be able to make deals and get things done. I'm not always going to have the same position. But as the debate went on, and particularly in the second hour, with the constant attacks from Cruz and Rubio, who, who really didn't go after each other, they seemed like they were tag-teaming him, you could see him kind of getting dragged down into it. And so by the end, he was back to little Marco and lying right, Ted, right. which is, I don't think, where he wanted to begin. Chris, I'm going to tell you one thing I'm absolutely looking forward to is Fox News Sunday, because I hear you have a couple of special guests, uh, two I'd like to really hear from. Who are they? Yeah. Uh, well, at a time when the party seems on the verge of tearing itself apart, we're going to talk to Rush Limbaugh live, a rare television interview, El Rushbo, uh, so I, his millions of fans, you can tune in and see him live on Sunday, and then Mitt Romney, who of course made that just extraordinary speech, whether you liked it or you didn't like it, to have somebody who